Hello YouTube and welcome to the next Root Learning video. On today's video we're going to be visiting the new Feather River Canyon route which was recently released by Dovetail Games and I'm going to be driving the first of a three part scenario which comes with the route called Keddy Consignment Part 1. Although I do ultimately plan on recording all three parts to this scenario, I'm not going to be recording the other two parts straight away, simply because I want to have a bit more variety on the channel, and as this is such a long journey with all three parts, I just don't think it would be too interesting to record them all together. So in this first part of the scenario, we're going to be driving between Oroville Yard and a place called James, which is a passing loop just under 20 miles away from. Our attraction for the journey today is formed of two General Electric U30B diesel electric locomotives. The U30Bs were constructed between May 1966 and March 1975, with a total of 296 of these locomotives produced. The wheel arrangement is in the BB formation, and they have a maximum power output of 3000 horsepower. Unfortunately, I can't find too much more technical information on the U30B, but I do know that it's a development from the U28B locomotives, and they had a maximum speed of 70 miles per hour, so I'm going to assume that the U30B also has a maximum speed of 70 miles per hour. As you can see, we are currently light loco, and in fact what I'm going to have to do is drive up the yard and then stop and reverse and turn around to hook up to our train before heading out towards James. Once in the cab of the U30B, there's really not much that I need to do to set up ready for departure. The first thing I am going to do is just press the H key twice to turn on the headlights. And now just to go through the cab here, I need to flip the instrument light switch, which is dial lights there, which just helps the instrument lights be illuminated more. I'm going to press L to turn off the cab light as it seems to default to on on this locomotive. And we don't need the cab lights to be on. And then next I'm going to put the reversing handle into the forward position, which is the bottom of the levers that you can see here which for some reason is showing in the reverse position in the cab, yet if you had the HUD turned on, it's showing itself in the neutral position. So I've just pressed W and you see that that is now in the forward position, so the locomotive is set to go forward. Now if we just go through some of the controls here, you can see in front of me there the throttle, which has eight notches of power, and then just above that is the dynamic brake system, which is controlled with the full stop and the comma key. So if you wanted to activate the dynamic braking, then what you have to do is press the full stop until the handle is in the setup position. And I believe you need to wait around 5 or 10 seconds before you start moving the handle upwards. So the dynamic braking of course does not use air, the air braking system and does not have any direct contact with the wheels, but instead uses the motors and I always forget exactly how it works, so please don't ask me to explain exactly how the uh, dynamic braking system works. Up here now you can see we've got the ammeter on the right hand side. When the needle is pointing to the right away from the zero that means that we are applying power and I'm going to try and keep that needle in the green zone and not go above that zone. When the needle points to the left away from the zero then at that point that is showing you that the dynamic brakes are on and working. At the top of the screen there we've got the speedometer measured in miles per hour and now in front of us here we have the brake gauges and the gauge that I'm actually interested in is the red needle on the gauge on the right which is the brake cylinder pressure gauge. I should, also, or sh I should also mention at this point that there is a brake difficulty multiplier which has been included with this locomotive. And what this does is it increases the time it takes for the brakes to release, particularly on a long train, and makes it much more realistic. So I'm going to now press Control Shift and 2, and you can see there it says Advanced Brakes, and I've changed the brake difficulty multiplier to Hard to make it as realistic as possible. But that means once we've connected up to the rest of our train, if I do need to make a brake application and then I move the brake handle to the release position, it's going to take a good minute or so before the brakes will actually fully release. And so it really doesn't mean that you need to plan ahead when driving a train with the brake multiplier on that difficulty setting. In front of us here now is the horn control. 
Now, if we go over here, we've got the main train brake handle, which has the red handle there. And so if I just apply the brakes, you see if you move it to the right hand side, well, if you're in the driver's position, push it away from you, then you're applying the brakes. And if you move it the other way, you are then releasing the brakes. And then just down here, we also have the independent brake or locomotive brake. So that controls the brakes just on the locomotives and not on the rest of the train. I would also like to point out with the uh, train brake handle that for some reason, I'm not quite sure why it is. It has a tendency to get stuck in the 15% position when I'm trying to release the brakes. So I have to actually look just to be absolutely sure that the brakes are fully released because otherwise you might find that the brakes aren't releasing when you think they are and your train will then come to a complete stop. Now that we've gone through all of the cab controls, I'm going to press T to start refueling, which is what you need to do at the start of this scenario, and pan to a couple more shots of the outside of the locomotives before then proceeding along the yard to connect up to the rest of our train. So we're now pulling away from the refueling point in Oroville Yard and the starting speed limit here is 15 miles per hour so I need to try and not go above that. Looks like we're now approaching 15 so I've just cut the power back for a moment. I'm just going to idle the power along here and go back up to notch 1 if we lose too much speed but I think we're currently doing okay for speed here. And it's around three quarters of a mile now to travel along the yard to the other end to where we need to stop. And then once we've reached the stopping point, I will then change ends to drive up to our train. So I've now driven this section of the route a couple of times. I have to say I do quite like the scenery along here. But I do feel that this route suffers from the problem that a lot of American freight routes suffer from. And that's that there's actually not a lot to do once we've left the yard and once we're out and we reach um, the full line speed limit. Um, there's some quite steep uphill gradients along here and they prevent the train from actually being able to achieve the speed limit. As a result of that, for the most part, a lot of this journey actually involves just me sitting and watching what the train is doing rather than actually actively getting involved simply because there's nothing much to do when you're driving below the speed limit and there are very few speed changes. I think we're just losing a bit too much speed here now. So I'll just put the power back up to notch one for a moment. I can see the speedometer needle is now climbing and I think we're now back up to around 15 miles per hour. I could be wrong as you can see on the speedometer there it's actually quite difficult to uh, read the um, sort of intermediates so you can see you've got 20 40 60 80 100 but there's no marker for 10 miles an hour or 30 and so there's definitely no marker for the five miles per hour limits in between so it is actually quite difficult to precisely read exactly how fast we're going and so i'm having to use a best estimate to guess what speed we are traveling at We are now coming towards the other end of the yard here. And so we're going to be turning left in a moment and then crossing a series of points. What I'm aiming to do is stop roughly in the area of the fifth point along here. And that should be the right place to stop. Now, if you stop too early, then the point behind you, which needs to change so you can turn around and drive back to connect to your train, won't actually change. So you do have to bear that in mind. These points are not manual points. They are, in fact, automatic points. So it will automatically change itself so long as I stop far enough along. So this is the first point we've just crossed now. And we're now coming up on the second point. And the third and the fourth is just coming up so I'm just going to start preparing to stop now on the fifth point which is now the next point you can see I've just applied the brakes lightly now to bring our speed down and we should now be stopping in a moment in about the right place to be able to reverse and go back 
onto the correct track for our train. So I'm just going to press control and plus now to change ends of the locomotive. We should now be set up, just going to turn on the headlights here. Now having to press the brake handle again several times, it didn't seem to want to release for a moment there. Just sound the horn and now give us a low amount of power. And I'm also just going to look down slightly as a further view, slightly more looking down and turn out the cab light. And I'm not going to proceed along here any faster than around 10 miles per hour, which I believe we're doing around 10 now. As you can see, the point ahead of us has now changed. So we are just about to turn to the right. And one important thing to mention with this scenario is that you have to stop before the train ahead and wait until it tells you that you can proceed and couple. If not, then it will tell you that you have failed the scenario because you haven't followed instructions properly. So you've got to stop first before coupling. You can't just drive straight up to the trucks ahead and couple to them. I'm now applying the brakes to bring our speed down. And we should now be stopping nicely just before the train ahead. And now that we've stopped here, I'm just going to wait for the pop-up box to come up, which will tell me that I am then cleared to proceed to couple to the train ahead. At that point, I'm then going to release the brakes and I'm going to use a very low amount of power just to connect to them as slowly as possible to have the sort of, well, just not exceed what they would call maybe freight comfort levels. I just don't want to jerk the uh, freight around the head of us. So we just had the pop-up box now. So I'm now going to release the brakes. I've just had to press the release button four times, unfortunately, which is rather annoying. And now we're in a very low power setting. Now I'm just going to shut the power off here. There's a little bit more power. Didn't give us quite enough a moment ago. And so we have now coupled up and the pop-up says great you have clearance to depart when ready and you should be prepared for meets at Cram and James where I'll be put in the hole. Okay so I now need to change ends of the loco once again so we're back to the front loco. I'm just going to pan to another shot of the train here before we depart and head out towards James. Okay, so we are now cleared to depart from Auroville Yard here. I have got the brakes in the release position and you can probably see there the red brake cylinder needle pressure gauge is very slowly falling. That's due to the brake difficulty multiplier, which I mentioned earlier. I think we're just about ready now to start applying power. Now the brakes are almost fully released. Sound the horn to let anyone in the area know that we're now starting to move. Uh, once again, the maximum speed limit is currently 15 miles per hour, and at this point we've got around 19 miles to go to James. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply the power very slowly and gradually. I'm going to check the ammeter. As you can tell, now I'm accelerating much slower because I've got a rather long and heavy train behind me, which of course is affecting my ability to accelerate. And once again, I'm going to have to do a best guess when it comes to working out exactly how fast we're traveling so that I try and not exceed the 15 mile per hour speed limit.
I'm just cutting the power back to notch one now as our speed is getting up towards where I think 15 miles per hour is. Just after we've joined this track here, the speed limit is actually technically now going up to 20 miles per hour. However, we won't be able to accelerate to that for quite some time due to the length of this train. At this point I'm now cutting the power back to idle, as I'm pretty sure we are doing 15. When I feel the speed has fallen a bit, then I will just go back into notch 1 of power to try and maintain a speed as close to 15 as I can. As always, once again, apologies for taking around two weeks to get uh, another video up. Uh, again, it's just busyness with university, and then unfortunately, the last weekend, I actually came down with a very bad case of the flu, which seems to have been going around quite a lot recently. I'm still recovering from it now, though I'm certainly far better than I was at the weekend. In fact, on Saturday, I literally didn't get out of bed all day. It was just one of those really horrible <laughs> cases. Very rare that I get the flu. Because I have asthma, I do actually qualify for a free flu injection, which I should have got back in October. But unfortunately, I forgot to do it. So I've really only got myself to blame for the fact that um, I developed the flu. And I'm very glad that I am now recovering from it. Though we did actually have a class test today at university for the logic module, which is the module that's first becoming the bane of my life. And I wasn't quite fully focused on it just because I'm still not feeling quite 100%. However, I've, I've started to get better again throughout today, so I thought I'd give recording the next video a go. I did say in the last video that I promised the next one would be on the Feather River Canyon route. It's been a while, I know, since I made an American video, and this is quite a new route. So I just wanted to just really start to show this route off, because I do quite like it myself. Um, though, as I've already mentioned, I will also be doing part two and three of the scenario for this um, route, and when I do, then you'll really get to see the route shine through parts two and three. So coming up just ahead is where we're going to turn left and join the single track to our left and we're then going to be a single track route for the most part and just as we approach this curve to the left here I can then accelerate up towards 20 miles per hour as I can be sure that the rear of the train is cleared enough so that we can accelerate towards the 20 mile per hour speed limit. So I'm now going into notch 2 of power just to gradually bring our speed up towards 20 it's not a huge increase in the speed right now, so I shouldn't need more than two notches of power to gradually bring us up towards that. And also, if you look at the ammeter, you can see that even with two notches of power, we're, we're already halfway through the green zone there. So I want to make sure that I don't overload the locomotive. Now that we're on this single track section, the speed limit is actually going up to 45 miles per hour. But again, it's going to be a while before we can actually accelerate towards that due to the length of the train. So we're now doing 20. I've just cut the power back to notch one. And then in a moment, I will cut the power back further to idle and then go back up to notch one as we start to lose a little bit of speed. That's I'm idling the power now 
just to ensure that we don't end up breaking the speed limit. speed is now falling off. I reckon we're now doing around 18 miles per hour. So back up to notch one of power, slowly bring our speed up. And at this point, I believe we are now passing Oroville Depot, which is marked on the HUD as a station. So I don't know if it is a station or not. I'm guessing that it is. And the passenger services certainly have used this route in the past. Um, I don't know if they do today. I don't even know if this route still exists today or not, actually. I'd love to know a bit more history about this route, so if you are familiar with this route in this area, then please do go give me some more information in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear about it. As many of you know, I much prefer driving passenger services to freight services, so I'd actually be quite keen to drive a passenger run along here if it would be realistic and prototypical. We will be able to accelerate up towards 45 miles per hour in a moment. It's at one of these overbridges just here. I believe it may be the second overbridge. I'm not 100% certain. No, I am correct. It is the second overbridge after the point uh, joins from the left-hand side, which joined us a moment ago. So in a moment, I'm going to start increasing the power, not straight up to full power, of course, because I want to prevent us from overloading the locomotive. So initially I'm going up to notch two of power now. I'm just going to look at the ammeter and see what happens with the needle there. In fact, I'm now going to go up to notch three of power as I believe we're able to do so. As you can see there, the needle still hasn't climbed too far, so I've now gone up to notch four of power. So we are now starting to gather some speed here. I'm still going up further, we're now in notch five of power. Now coming up here around this area, we're now starting on an uphill gradient initially at 0.8%, which will still allow us to accelerate, but at a much slower rate, especially as more train enters the gradient, so more train behind us enters the gradient, then the slower our acceleration rate is going to be. And I have now put the locomotive into notch eight, so we are now in full power. And at this point, due to the way that the gradients are, I'm really not going to have much to do between here and James. So I'm going to leave it in full power, but we're not actually going to be able to get up to 45 miles per hour due to the gradients along here. We will shortly be crossing a river. And then once we have crossed the river, the gradient will be steepening further still to one percent and then at that point we'll actually start to lose a little bit of speed
just coming up on the river crossing now, which you can see here. And so just as we've got to the other side, the other side of this bridge, then the gradient will indeed be steepening to 1%. And while we're currently doing around probably 32 to 33 miles per hour, we can easily ex expect that speed to fall considerably further. One of the things that I've noticed with this route is a distinct lack of level crossings or grade crossings. I'm not quite sure why that is, whether the route was purposely built that way or not. I've really not seen um, many level crossings. In fact, I don't recall seeing any at all. Um, so I don't actually need to use whistleboards, um, of course, to warn people that I'm coming, which makes life a bit easier for me because I generally seem to mess up the long, long, short, long Born sequence on American routes, no matter how hard I try, I can never get it quite perfect. So there are now no major landmarks that I can really point out until the first passing loop which we're going to encounter, which is at a place called Cram. One of the things that I'm not quite so keen on with this particular locomotive is the view that you get out the front. As you can see, I've got uh, three different windows to be looking out of, but I just feel that the field of view is a bit too restricted in this locomotive. And I generally prefer locomotives with uh, maybe a bigger window at the front so that you can uh, see a bit more. Certainly if we're on a right-hand curve in this loco, I can see around the curve fairly well. When we're on a left-hand curve, as we're just about to be, then it's actually really difficult to see around the curve. And also, as you'll see later when it comes to stopping at James, um, it's actually quite difficult to see a signal if it's placed on the other side. So I've got to be very careful uh, when looking out for signals if they are placed on the left-hand side rather than on the right-hand side. see now that our speed is falling off indeed the speed is probably now around 26 to 27 miles per hour so we have lost around six to seven miles per hour at this point which doesn't sound like a lot but when you're traveling at this slower speed it certainly adds to the overall journey time
So it looks like we're now coming up on the passing loop at Cram. I can see another train just there and the point to the right hand side. So I think this is something like a mile long, if I remember rightly. And at this point, the gradient is about to shallow back to 0.8%, which will allow us to gain a bit more speed. And at the start of this loop just here, we've got just under 13 and a half miles to go to Jake's. So I'd just like to mention upcoming videos, of course the class 90 train guide which I seem to mention quite a lot is still on the way. Um, in addition to that, we are Just Trains have recently released the Western Main Lines route, which is the route from London Paddington through to Oxford, Cardiff Central, Bristol and Exeter St David's, uh, although we're not including the Westbury route so it's Exeter via Bristol. It also includes all of the branches of the original Bristol Avonmouth add-on as well. So it's a very extensive route, which I've recently got hold of. And um, I'm planning on making several videos on this ultimately. But for the first video on that route, I'm hoping to do a journey between London and Cardiff in an HST. And I'm hoping to be able to do this next week. Um, next week at university is what we call consolidation week. And it actually means that I have very few classes and I actually get to have uh, a bit more of um, time to study at home but in addition to that I also get more free time so as a result of that I want to try and see if I can get at least two or three videos done between the weekend that's just coming and the end of next week I'm aiming for three videos if possible so one will indeed be on the western main lines route though I will say having driven through some of it already even when not recording I have been experiencing quite a few patches of lag, probably just due to the size of the route. So I would like to apologise in advance for when I make that video, if there is a bit of lag in the video. I will say that this route, when running it, is running very, very smoothly indeed. I'm not having many lag problems at all. So I'm quite appreciating the way that the Feather River Canyon route performs when uh, recording. Now, Armstrong Powerhouse have also released their brand new route, which is the um, Wherry Lines, which goes from Norwich to Great Yarmouth and Lower Stock, which um, is a collection really of branches. It's not a hugely long um, collection of branches. I think the furthest uh, journey is something like 20 miles, something like that. But I'm hoping to also make some videos on that. So I'm hoping to maybe do one in a class 37 and in addition to that, do at least one video in a class 150 or 156. I'm not sure what the correct DMUs would be to use along there, so I don't know if anyone can possibly help me with that. Uh, personally, I prefer the class 150 in Train Simulator, but in real life it may be that the 150 wouldn't really run along there. But then if it doesn't now, my other question would be, has it ever run along there? Because if it has, then I might just change the time period that I'm driving in so that I can use the class 150 for a video on the new Wary Lines add-on, which I have to say is very, very good quality um, in terms of the visuals and the way it's been put together. So um, I look forward to be being able to make that video and make that available on this channel, hopefully next week, along with the class 90 train guide, which has been promised now, I know for a couple of months, but the 
problem with making train guides and route guides is that due to the way that the videos are done, it takes literally hours and hours of work and each one's easily represented by 12 or more hours of work so it really is a challenge to do all the research, write the script and then put it all together and get all the footage from in-game, set up all the shots. There's just so much that goes into one of those videos um, and because they're so time consuming that's why I don't get to make them as often as I would like to. In addition to that, um, I think I may have mentioned this in the last video, I am hoping to make a video very soon in the Gatwick Express. In fact, I'm going to do a class 442 from Gatwick Airport to London, Victoria. And then when I've got hold of it, a class 73 from London, Victoria through to Gatwick Airport. So uh, two different Gatwick Express journeys using trains from two different eras to do that, which I just thought would make things uh, a bit more interesting. I'm also still planning on the West Coast Mainline North, which I've done uh, a lot of the route learning for now, between Glasgow and Carlisle in a Class 90 and DVT. So I'll be driving from the DVT end. Uh, I know I've not used that very much, and I do particularly enjoy driving the Class 90 and DVT set within Train Simulator. So that's another video that is still on the cards to be made soon, along with the West Highland Line extension which is again one that I've done most of the route learning for um, but it's just a very time consuming video to make and as I discovered at the time I can't actually save and then go back into it so if I'm driving on the West Highland Line extension route and I mess up say near the end or something then I have to go all of the way back to the start of the journey to start driving it again to get back to where I was before and as it's a two hour journey to drive the full length of the route you can imagine if I have to jump back an hour and 40 minutes, it's not ideal and um, it could get quite monotonous having to redrive the same sections over and over again. So there's quite a few plans there, um, which I'm looking forward to getting uh, to you very soon. So we've got the consolidation week at university next week, then I'm back at uni for one week and then it's the Easter holidays during the Easter holidays of course I'm going to Denmark for five days it's my birthday halfway through the five days on the 23rd of March I'm going to be 29 so I feel like I'm getting old just a little bit worried that I'll only be a year off 30 then which um, yeah means I'm really not the spring chicken anymore that I once was um, but still it'll be great to be out the country again and in Denmark and I'm really going to try and get some videos there See if I can put something together for YouTube like I originally wanted to do when I went to Hungary. But unfortunately, of course, I did get the video footage, didn't realise the image stabilisation had somehow turned off on my camera. And all of the footage is just too shaky to use in a video to put online, which is why I haven't ultimately done so. So, yep, I'm going to try and put a video together of what I'm doing in Denmark and uh, get uh, quite a few shots of trains where possible just just a probably only a five or ten minute video just a really short documentary about trains within Denmark itself and then I'm back from Denmark on the 26th of March and then for the rest of the Easter holiday my, my real focus is going to be on YouTube so certainly um, for the rest of this month into early April you can expect to see um, an increase in the number of videos which I'm making so I'm really hoping to, to try and uh, get it up so that um, I've made it, I'd say, at least six or seven videos in the time over next week and Easter holidays. Um, as I know, I haven't been able to really make many videos so far this year due to various reasons.
can't remember if I've mentioned this yet or not. I know I have mentioned my plans to go to Chicago next year, but uh, those plans are now set in stone. So I'm going to be in Chicago between the 22nd of June and the 8th of July, which is again something I'm really looking forward to. But at the minute, I'm really trying to find some more rail related things to do in the Chicago or Illinois area. So for any of my American viewers or subscribers, um, I'd be really interested to hear from you of any rail related things you can recommend or maybe journeys I could take, railway museums, heritage railways, anything like that. Um, I'd really love to be able to check out some rail related stuff whilst I'm in America. Um, but I will be limited in mobility so I will be primarily based in the Chicago area and probably won't be travelling too far away from there unless it's by train of course. I know I am certainly planning on having a look at the Aurora to Chicago route which we got in Train Simulator as I'd really like to see that route in real life just to see what it looks like. Uh, so that is one route I definitely plan on travelling along whilst I'm staying in the Chicago area. But for any other journeys, any other rail related stuff, please do let me know in the comments as I'd be really interested to know what's available for me to do whilst I'm out. So we've been climbing on an almost constant 1% grade since the last loop. Our speed is currently hovering at around 25 miles per hour. I'm currently waiting for the next loop at Elson. Just before the start of that loop, the gradient will be shallowing to 0.8%. And then during the uh, loop itself, the grade will sh be shallowing further to 0.6% just before the uh, next overbridge after the loop begins. It looks like we're just coming up on the next loop now. The grade is now shallowing to 0.8%. And at the start of this loop just here, we've then got seven and a quarter miles to go to our stopping point at James.
It looks like I can just see the next overbridge coming up in the middle window there. It's quite difficult to see, but I think it's just about to come up now. And so at this point, the gradient is going to shallow further to 0.6%, as I mentioned a little while ago. So we will actually be able to start gathering a bit of speed and we'll actually probably be able to get closer to 40 miles per hour before the gradient steepens once again and we start to lose speed. We should be coming up on the end of the loop soon, at the end of the loop. In fact, it looks like I can see the end of the loop there. So at this point, just here, we've then got six miles to go to James. Now continuing to gain speed a little bit quicker than before as more of the train is now on the 0.6% grade. Somewhere along here, though I'm not sure of the exact position, the grade will be steepening to 1% once again. And so at that point we will then start to lose speed once again. And what I'm looking out for next along here is the next signal. As we uh, pass the next signal, we've then got just under four and a half miles to go to our stopping point. I believe we are now back on the 1% grade as it looks like our speed is falling. So unfortunately we weren't able to gather quite as much speed as I first thought. And we weren't able to get as close to 40 miles per hour as I uh, was first expecting. We are now passing the next signal, so as already mentioned, we've now got just under four and a half miles to go to James. And the next landmark will be the following signal which it has two and three quarter miles to go to James. At the next tall embankment we come across along here between this location and the next signal, the grade is actually be go going to be shallowing to 0.5%. I should also point out that at the next signal there is just a third of a mile to go to a speed limit reduction down to 35 miles per hour. And whilst that won't initially affect us because we're going to be doing below 35 already, as the grade shallows, I'm then going to have to start reducing the power just after passing the next signal to ensure that we don't end up exceeding the 35 mile per hour speed limit.
So here's the next tall embankment which I mentioned a moment ago. Along here the grade is now going to shallow to 0.5%. I can leave the train in full power for now. And then just after we start passing the next signal, with two and three quarter miles to go to James and a third of a mile to go to the upcoming 35 speed limit, I'm going to start cutting the throttle back just to ensure that we don't break that speed limit. So here's the signal which I've been talking about, we've now got a third of a mile to go to the upcoming 35 limit. I've now stepped the power back by two notches, you should just see the ammeter has just fallen a little there. That should be okay for now and I will cut back the power further as we get closer to the speed limit. So we've now entered the 35 mile per hour speed zone and we're doing around 30 miles per hour at present and the speed is indeed climbing. It looks like we're heading towards 31 to 32. I'm just going to now cut the power back to half so we're now on notch 4 of power. And I will cut further in a moment if necessary. What I'm looking out for next along here is a tunnel. As we enter the tunnel, we've then got two miles to go to James and three quarters of a mile to go to an upcoming 20 mile per hour speed restriction. I'm cutting the power back further now. In fact, I'm going to idle the power in a moment just before entering this tunnel here. I'm going to idle the power now, as mentioned, We've got around three quarters of a mile to go to an upcoming 20 mile per hour speed restriction. Initially, the shallow gradient that we're on will cause us to lose a bit of speed, but it won't cause us to lose enough speed so that we've slowed down to 20 in time. So the moment I can see the exit to this tunnel, I'm going to make a light brake application so that I can slow down in time for the upcoming 20 limit. And I'm going to need to release the brakes when we're doing around 23 to 24 due to the brake difficulty multiplier setting. So we're now down to around, it looks like to me, 27, 28 miles per hour. Heading down further towards 25. We are losing speed quite nicely heading through this tunnel here. I can now see the exit of the tunnel, so I'm now making a light brake application. And I'm now going to fully release the brakes. I press the brake handle several times because I know uh, how the brakes just don't seem to want to release on this. And now you can see the red needle is slowly falling. In fact, I brake slightly too much there and I'm going to give us a couple of notches of power just until the brakes are fully released to try and prevent us from losing too much speed along here. So we're just about to enter the loop here at James um, sidings here and we've got around one and a quarter miles to go once we enter the loop to the other end. So the brakes are now fully released. I'm currently in notch two of power momentarily. The grade will be steepening again to 0.8% just as we enter this loop here. So 
We're currently holding it around 18 miles per hour. I'm not quite sure if I've got enough power to maintain the speed here, so I've gone up to notch three of power momentarily, just to see what happens to the speedometer. So as we now head towards the end of the loop, we're still a little way off that yet. Um, I do need to bear in mind that I'm going to have a red signal, as I believe the yellow signal we just passed just told me. And the signal's visibility is actually quite difficult to see here, so I have to bear that in mind. It's difficult to see where the end of the loop is due to this sort of very restricted cab view I have, um, which I mentioned earlier. I know that I'm getting towards the end of the loop as I see some water and rocks on the right hand side so I'm going to be looking out for them uh, very shortly. It's going to be on a left hand curve. It could well be the next left hand curve but I'm not certain. At this point though I'm just going to cut the power back to notch 1 and allow the train to start losing a little bit of speed. So I'm just going to allow the speed now to fall down towards 15 miles per hour and then try and hold us there for a moment until I've got a better idea of exactly where we are in relation to the end of the loop. Now gone back up to notch two of power just to stop us losing any more speed at this moment. Looks to me at present we're probably doing around 13 miles per hour, which should be about right because we're definitely going slow enough to be able to stop. Certainly with a train this heavy, we need to allow plenty of uh, breathing room when it comes to braking distances. I do believe that we are now coming towards the end of the loop and in a moment on the right hand side we should be seeing uh, the water and rocks which I mentioned. So I'm just looking down there now, so I believe it's down in that sort of valley thing to the right. And yes indeed, that indeed looks like there is water down there, which means we are nearing the end of the loop. And I'm shutting off the power to allow us to coast down in speed for now because once I've applied the brakes, it takes so long for them to come off um, that I'm probably going to end up stopping too early. As this scenario will cut off quite quickly once I have actually stopped, I just want to take this opportunity now to say thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed it and please don't forget that you can find me on Facebook for the latest updates, though I haven't been able to update Facebook quite as much recently just because I haven't had so much chance to make videos. That is the best place to find updates for this channel and I do have the link to my Facebook page in the description of this video. So we're just coming up now uh, on the end of the loop, you can see the signal on the right hand side there. And so the signal on the left is pretty much parallel to that, I believe. 
so I'm aiming to stop just before that, just about ready to apply the brakes. I'm going to start applying the brakes now, and we should then be stopping in about the right place. So here we are, arrival at James, and once again, thank you for watching.